Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today I want to embark on an amplifier building adventure. So I want to make what I call the universal amplifier because you can plug different voltage supplies into it. You might have power bricks or wall warts you could use, different ones you can use. And um, I'm going to use the TDA 2050 chips. You might be asking, John Audio Tech, why are you using those? They're obsolete and why not use Class D? You know, come on, guy, get modern. Well, I had this board already. I made it years ago. Yeah, these are my favorite chips. I'm a linear guy at heart. I'm a Class AB linear guy. I, like I said, I had this board. I want to use it, put to good use. And you can still get authentic TDA 2050s. You know, about everything you buy on eBay is fake or, you know, those stores, uh, online stores. I don't want to name names, but you know what I mean. These here are from Delbany. Let's see, do they have their little Delbany Global? And the TDA Original New. And then their fine print, they say Original New is the actual product. And let me see here if I can get my half the mouse with my left hand here, so it's kind of weird. So, yeah, parts labeled Original New, brand new original manufacturer. Uh, labeled generic or brand new and are made by third party. So I bought stuff from them 10, 11 years ago. They, they've been around for quite a while. But you might say, oh, look how much these things cost. You know, $10 for one chip. Well, you get a little discount if you buy a couple of them. But you have to consider that it's a free shipping there it's free shipping on that if they still made these today's prices from digikey or mauser would be probably four or five bucks and you would have to pay shipping so it does narrow the gap in the cost a little bit but yeah if you want original chips they are going to cost so yeah that's a source, a potential source for the chips if you want to actually try these. Uh, one of my favorite chips, I always like these little TO220 style 5 pin amplifier chip type design. The TDA2050 and the LM1875 being my favorites. But anyway, enough of that. That's what I'm going to use. But I'm going to use it in single supply mode. I'm going to use a virtual supply setup to power these things. Okay, so here's the virtual supply. So what happens here is you bring in a single supply and you use capacitors and resistors to split it. So you end up with a virtual ground. And relative to the amplifier you get a negative voltage I should say, relative to the virtual ground, you get a negative voltage and a positive voltage. Now, for this to work, load has to be drawn equally or you'll get an imbalance. So I have to run some tests to make sure I'm not going to get an imbalance. And these 5-pin chips always work pretty good with this type of supply. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring power in. And I'm going to use little barrel jacks. I'm going to use two of them because I always find that I have like a one of those wall warts or power bricks. And they never fit in the jack I want to use it in. So I'll have a 2.5 millimeter and a 2.1. So it will likely fit in one of those. And another reason for using the TDA-2050 is wide supply voltage. It'll run down 
to below 5 volts, but I'm just saying 9 to 35 volts. You can, of course, go higher. But this will be the range. Kind of limited with the heat sink I have. But anyway, it comes in and goes through a fuse. I have to determine the value of the fuse. And through a shot key diode, I'm using the STP. S5L60. It's a 5 amp 60 volt shot key diode. The reason for that is if you accidentally plug in where the center is negative, you don't want to damage the amplifier or the power pack. So that just lets voltage flow one way. And the shot key has a low forward voltage drop so you don't lose too much voltage. And this diode, compared to all the other ones I have, has a very low forward voltage drop, even at higher currents. So that's uh, one reason I like that diode there. So here's the actual splitting circuit or balancing network. Next we go through the capacitors. You have to have capacitors in this balancing circuit because that's the low impedance path for the return from your speaker. So you have your outputs and the other side's tied to ground and it comes through here and it needs to return. It needs a low impedance AC path. So you need those capacitors there, fairly large value, even though you're using a DC voltage source. So I'm using uh, a pair of 3300 microfarads on each side. I might just use single 4700s out to see what I have available. Next is the balancing resistors. These have to be a certain value. You know, if they're too high, you might get some imbalance. If they're too low, it draws too much quiescent current. Usually 1K resistors work fine here. I'm going to try to get away with 2200s so I have a little bit less quiescent current. And this is just a power on diode. It has to connect across the rails. If I connect it to one side, it will cause an imbalance. So I have to run some tests. So I have a little test circuit set up here with the TDA 2050 board feeding a single supply in from my Radio Shack power supply into the little rail virtual supply, whatever you want to call it. So it has the two caps here. I'm just using two caps for the test and a couple 2200 ohm resistors. So from that comes the three wires for the uh, ground plus and minus supply for the amp. Now I'm just using this part of the board here for my input signal, connecting it to a load. I have to run some tests. You want to see what happens. Is it going to stay balanced with no load at full load into clipping? You know, if the amp clips asymmetrically it might pull the voltage to one side and with a clipping music signal I want to make sure that it stays balanced as well. Okay, I'm running the amp into a load with a signal there and I have it clipping just a little bit. So the positive rail is 15.4 volts and the negative rail is negative 15.2 so that's fine that's close enough within 0.2 volts a half a volt's fine even if it was off grossly you'd still get zero offset at the output the way these amps work but you know it would clip on one side first it'd be throwing away some power headroom but yeah, you want it to stay fairly balanced. And you can even see there it's clipping pretty symmetrically. So for a case, I was just going to use one of these project boxes. Nothing fancy. This thing's going to get 
tossed about. This one's kind of scratchy. I think I'll use this black one. I don't have to make a lid. So I have this plexiglass. It's acrylic stuff. And I have to cut it down. Make a lid for it. I have to drill holes and all that good stuff. I have this heat sink. It's not the biggest size, but about the only thing I have that'll fit. So I'll mount this up maybe like this. And uh, I made the little virtual supply board. I just used a couple of 4700s and the balancing caps. So, oops, that'll fit in here somewhere. So what I'll probably do is uh, put a volume control, an LED light, and a little rocker switch in the front of it. On the back, I'll have the 2.1 and 2.5 millimeter barrel type jacks, fuse, RCA inputs and just the spring-loaded terminals. I was thinking uh, I might use These things off of uh, Some audio equipment, but I think I'm just going to use The spring terminals I got some stuff I bought from Parts Express went down there so Yeah, I use that I, eh, These are just quick I just like them. They're simple. Easy peasy. Nothing fancy. You got a bunch of other parts. I do owe you some amplifier projects. The JAT 801 with the uh, paralleled output stage for high power. 150 watts or so. That amplifier is pretty much designed. And the JAT 501H, which is the hot rodded 501, which is just this thing operating on a higher supply voltage. That way, you can, for people who want to run the thing with an 8 ohm load and get a little more power than 50 or 60 watts, might get 7580. And of course, the Son of Easy amp would be a simple design, maybe around 35, 40 watts. 8 ohm loads and maybe 50 or so 4 ohm loads so yeah still owe those amplifiers they're pretty much designed it's just the hard part is you know it takes about a day to you know design a proto board and lay it out I'm thinking I might just go straight in to making or uh, you know having the board made for the 801 because it's you know it's a lot more complex it's kind of hard to proto those things out it's easier just to have the board made so I'll probably go straight into having a board made and uh, prototyping it that way so yeah um, I'll stop here this will be a multi-parter and yeah, probably two Maybe a third part. And I can't see it being any longer than that. But I'll stop it here. Appreciate the support. That's what helps me buy my parts and things. I spent 150 bucks at Mauser for those amps I'm going to build. And that's not all the parts I need. I still need to get some other parts. Plus I had to stock up on some stuff. I was getting low. But yeah, this stuff doesn't come for free. So... Appreciate any support you could give me. So yeah, I'll stop it right here and we'll come back for some more. Thanks for watching.